So I've created a six-step process to achieve your goals. So that is what this book covers. So the book starts off with um, step one, which is write your goals. And so it's important that you write your goals. It's important that you imagine your goals happening. And so then it takes you through the whole process. It's also filled with a lot of my personal life stories of things that I've inspired to do and the goals that I've set and things that I've been able to achieve. So that's what the book is about. The book is 76 pages long. It's not a long read. It won't take you a long time to read it. But in order for you to complete this process, you have to use the workbook. And I'm going to show you the workbook. And this is the workbook. And so inside of this workbook, you'll basically use this to basically carry you through the process. And I'm going to pass this around so everybody can take a look. I'm going to start with you, Brendan. You just pass it around. Um, and so inside of the workbook is a calendar to keep you focused because a lot of times we don't plan and, and organize the way we should so that our life can flow the way it needs to flow. So it has a calendar inside and also a goal planner. And a goal planner is basically every week you write down your goals, the things that you want to work on for the week. And then up under the goals that you want to work on, you write down your to-do list. So you literally write down a list of the things you need to do in order to achieve the goals that you have for that week. And I have week by week, so for February, you would have done week by week. And at the end of February, I have a place where you celebrate your wins. It's important that we remember the things that we have achieved because a lot of times we're thinking about the end goal instead of, thinking of, instead of enjoying the journey. And so tell me, what do you think God wants you to do more? Think about the end goal or enjoy the journey? Enjoy the journey, right? He wants you trust in him and leaning in on him each part of the journey, okay? And I, I'm work continuing to increase in that myself, so I encourage you guys to do the same. I also have a place where you can write new ideas. I'm always thinking of new ideas and new things, and I'm always, you know, just thinking of stuff. And what I realized is if I don't write those things down, I forget them. And so there's a place inside of this it's inside of the planner that gives you a space to kind of write down the things that you're thinking about and the things that, you know, they may not be goals right now, but it's something that you might want to do later on in life. Or I realized that if you are a person that comes out with a whole lot of ideas, start writing them down because one day God may put you in a position where you can start selling your ideas for money. Now, who don't want to do that? All I had to do was think of it. You're going to implement it. I got a lot of those. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the sum total of the book. Was the book writing process hard? Mm, sort of, kind of. Writing the book wasn't too bad, but finding someone to help me edit it and then going through the process of critiquing the wording and making sure that everything was flowing and pouring everything that I could into this book was difficult. I think I was up to 2 o'clock Thursday morning making sure that everything was in there that the Lord wanted to put in there. Because as I mentioned on Facebook Live, I'm believing that this book will surpass me for generations. I'm believing that this book will be something that people tell people, go get that little book. You know, It's a little white book. It says like something about best life or something. It'll help you. I'm believing it's going to be something like that. And I know God may have me revise this book. There may be revisions. There may be different versions. But... I wanted to make sure that I was open to him enough so that he could put something inside of, he's put something inside of me and all of us. And I want this to be, I desire that this be something that transforms your life, that you build upon the knowledge in this book and you take it to the next level. So before I, I'm going to read a little excerpt of the book. Does anybody have any questions about the process? No? Okay. All right, so let me see. What am I going to read goals is to feel. And so I'm going to read a story about feeling, okay? Feel. Practice, practice feeling what you will experience when you accomplish your goal. One Christmas, one Christmas as a teen, I wanted a Los Angeles Raiders team coat. They are now the Los Angeles 
the Las Vegas Raiders starter jacket. Starter jackets were their, those bulky team coats everyone wore in the 90s. Did everybody remember starter jackets? Oh, those of you who was, lived in the 90s. You remember starter, you remember starter jackets, Nisha? You remember starter jackets? Okay, I wanted a Los Angeles Raiders start. My mom back there laughing. I, I wanted a Los Angeles Raiders starter jacket. Don't make me feel like I'm the oldest one in this room. Woo, Lord. Okay, what you have? A, a, a Charlotte. The Hornets. The Cowboys? Uh, the Buffalo Bills? Okay, but anyway, I had a Raiders starter jacket. Long story short. Okay. Anyway, my parents, in, in so many words, told me they were not sure the Christmas gifts would come on time that year and were concerned that the jacket would be sold out. This, is, of course, was before online, sell, online shopping existed. I chose to ignore what my mom said, and instead I believed I would get the coat. Why? Because believing I would not get the coat for Christmas made me sad. Instead, every day I imagined waking up on Christmas to lots of gifts and my starter jacket. I imagined what it would feel like to see lots of gifts under the tree. I imagined when, what it would feel like when I opened up the present to find my jacket. I imagined what it would feel like to try on the jacket. And I just let my imagination run wild. The night before Christmas, my younger brother came into the room and asked, What are we going to do? There won't be any presents for us when we wake up tomorrow. I don't want to give up. I don't want to get up. I looked at him and said, there will be plenty of gifts. Let's get up early. And I, I don't know why. Yeah, I just I said that in real life. <laughs> okay. Christmas morning came, and guess what? There were plenty of gifts, including my starter jacket. So what happened? My parents said that they were paid for a job on Christmas Eve, and right before the stores closed, they hurried to the store. The store only had one jacket left, a black and white gray a black white and gray raiders jacket and it was in my size all right Did, did my imagination help the money and the jacket arrive for my parents to for my parents to ensure Christmas came on time? Yes, I believe that what I imagined came into existence. But again, I, I have another story in the book about electricity bill. Um, like the, the electricity bill example, if this goal did not come into existence, I would be equipped with a positive mindset to overcome disappointment. You have two options to think positively and feel the feelings you will experience when your goal is achieved, or you can resort to the negative. If my Christmas morning did not end up the way I expected, I would not have regretted thinking optimistically. The energy that goes into a negative mindset is draining. I do not want to take on those toxic patterns. The moral of the story, think positively about your goals. Get to where you can feel what you will experience when you achieve your goal. Your mind will respond to your feelings and lead you to those desires. All right. So that's, that's just a little bit of the book. And it goes on with different life stories and different things that have um, happened in my life and the ways that I was able to push through to see the manifestation of this book today come to pass. This was a goal. This was a goal. This was a goal. It was a goal. Did everything go smoothly? No. Even until this last week, the devil was throwing all kind of crazy mess and it, it I really grew this week because I learned what it meant to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord right. I, I had an idea of what that was but now I understand that stand still means to be poised right. it means to look of faith to be happy to smile you know if I have to cry cry know that all is well and keep pushing right. but it's your poise and, and so it's kind of like this. You know, God wants you to be uh, happy and joyful because by faith you have already overcome every challenge that comes your way. 
He doesn't want you to be in the bed crying every morning, can't get out the bed, calling folks crying. You going to ruin their day. And now those, you have times like that. You have times like that, but he wants you to overcome. He wants you to push on out of it. So just know that if you're going through anything or life gets hard, that does not mean stop. That does, does not mean that God doesn't love you. That doesn't mean that what you're doing is the wrong thing. It just means that there's a thing called life, and life is filled with a whole lot of ne negativity, okay? But God has overcome the world. And all you have to do is focus in on him, believe in him, and believe that good things are for you and that you deserve it. Don't never let nobody tell you you don't deserve good because you do. You deserve every good thing. You deserve to walk in perfect health. You deserve to have a perfect love. You deserve to have perfect mindset, perfect eyes, perfect body, whatever it is. And you deserve to perfectly achieve God's plan and purpose for your life. Okay? And I'm going to stop there. You deserve it. All right. I love you guys. Thank you all so much for us spending this time with me and Facebook. If you would like to purchase the book, you can inbox me or you can go online at cameobobo.com. Click the link that says my book and you can purchase the book and the planner as a set 